So let's start things off with more news from the Escape Zebra Saga in Upper Marlboro. Theodore McKenzie, the man who started a fundraiser to save Prince George's County's runaway zebras and the caretaker of the land where the zebras are roaming, says that one of them appears to be pregnant. They're at 1038 at the feeding station and it was happy and it was eating. He has been feeding the zebras and tracking their movements on motion capture cameras. Which the big one, the rumor is, might be pregnant. Look at the belly. Could be a veterinarian said pregnant. It could be in the woods right now off camera having a baby. We're not sure. <laughs> you see Bruce Lashan, he reacted like the zebra was his girlfriend pregnant. She didn't tell me nothing. Settle down, Bruce. You are not the father. Hey, hey. sorry, I instinctually dance whenever I hear you're not the father. As for you, Theodore, stop spreading rumors. Maybe she's just retaining water or she could have put on weight from all that good eating. You never just assume a woman is pregnant. That's how folks get slapped. This zebra saga has more twists and turns than the young and the restless. Pretty soon we gonna learn that Victor Newman is the baby's father and one of the zebras has an evil twin. Now I chose this next story out of Western Maryland because it could change the entire state. Republican legislators from Maryland's three westernmost counties have asked if their counties can join West Virginia as they feel their voices aren't being heard in Maryland's Democratic controlled General Assembly. As somebody who lives in DC, I want to be sympathetic. Then I think at least they have congressional representation. What y'all crying for? All we got was a slogan. Now I understand wanting your voice heard, but does your voice not outweigh the majority of the other voices in the state? This is like when people threaten to move to Canada every election cycle. Hey, good luck with that, eh? You win some, you lose some, eh? Don't pick up your ball and leave, hosers especially to one of the 10 poorest states in the country, according to the census. They didn't think this one out too well. Remember what happened the last time folks seceded? Yeah, it wasn't a good look. This West Virginia move is unlikely to happen, but if it does, I hope it makes everybody happy. Have fun playing the banjo on the front porch in your new state, hosers. Finally, I chose this story because it affects travel and the entire region. Metro announced that it will continue to run on a reduced schedule until October 31st as they continue inspecting almost 60% of its rail cars after a derailment linked to malfunctioning wheels on its newest trains. Yeah, we know that this current uh, schedule will remain in effect until at least October 31st, according to Wamana officials this morning. We also know that ridership is down. They told us this morning that they usually average around 186,000 riders per day, but this week they've seen that drop to about 157,000 riders per day. That girl good. That girl good. You see that? Shout out to Megan Rivers delivering the news while winning a fight with her earpiece cord. Y'all don't know our struggle. Metro is single tracking their time frame. Everyone knew they would need more than a week to review that many trains. They just had to evacuate another train today. This process is going to take a while. The red line will run every 15 to 20 minutes. Blue, orange and green every 30 to 40 minutes. The yellow line every three to four days. Or for that line, regular service. The yellow line is basically a rumor at this point. This means next weekend you'll have more time to think about your life choices while waiting for a train home in your Halloween costume from the night before. I'm not judging. You go ahead and live your best life, sexy Buzz Lightyear, to infinity and beyond. Hopefully, at least to the next stop.